Peter Sankoff. I'm a professor of law at the University of Alberta. Sure, I teach an introductory course in criminal law. I teach the law of evidence and I teach a course in animals and law. Why did you decide to flip your course? So I was the first law professor in Canada to flip a course in a law faculty. Um, and what prompted me to do it was frankly just the recognition that students weren't getting it in the ordinary way. So at first what I started doing was introducing a problem-based learning into my class where students would work in small groups and they would work on problems. And what I found was there was an inherent difficulty being that there just wasn't enough time for me to explain the material, uh, engage with the problems, review the problems, and give them feedback. So the idea of coming to the flipped classroom was simply a recognition that if I didn't do it that way, there wouldn't be enough time to achieve the learning objectives in the classroom that I wanted to hit. How did you approach your flip? So what I started doing was I said, well, what if we take part of the class and take it out of the classroom? And I recognized that giving them mini lectures on video would be both an efficient use of their time and that they could watch these things whenever they wanted, but it was also an efficient use of my time because I no longer had to keep repeating the same things every year. And what we did instead was they would come to class, they'd watch these videos, and suddenly we could engage in all the problem solving that we wanted because the flipped classroom created enough time for us to do that. What went well? So in a sense of what's gone well, um, it's been fantastic in the sense that the students really embrace the format. So that's never been an issue. Uh, students realize that getting outside class learning puts them in a better position to succeed going in. And uh, their willingness and ability to sort of build on those outside experiences in the classroom has been wonderful. What didn't go so well? Well, when I changed to the classroom, it was trial and error. Um, and I just jumped in. So there were lots of things that went wrong. I mean, in terms of uh, video production, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I was sort of making it up as I went along. But also in terms of the real part of the flipped classroom is figuring out how to structure the class in a way that makes sense for the students. Because when you do a lecture in a standard way, it's very easy to put beginning, middle, and end together. But in terms of integrating videos that are like classroom components in an effective way, it really takes time and thinking. And I just sort of went running right ahead. So what I realized was all aspects of it needed to be done better if it was going to be integrated in a cohesive way. So after a second or third year of doing this, I would go back and I would look at, well, do these videos give the students what they need to succeed? And do the classroom activities build off the video in a sensible way? How is a flip classroom well suited to law education? Law students, um, most law students will eventually are, are trained to become lawyers. And lawyer, law is a problem-based discipline in that they're essentially, you know, trying to learn how to deal with problems in the real world. So what the flip classroom gives them is their opportunity to actually do that in class. You have to realize that in a lot of law classes, they're getting a one-way dialogue from the professor teaching them about the important things about the law that they really need to know. But in a flipped classroom dynamic, they can get all of that, what they need to know and understand about the law, and then integrate it with simulated scenarios that are very close to what they would do in practice. What have you learned from your flipping experience? When you're thinking about flipping the flipped classroom, if you're ever thinking about doing this, you really have to think about learning outcomes and instructional design. You've got to think about it as a way of what do you need to provide the students of not everything they need to know, but the core base that allows them to jump off and then really experience whatever you want them to do in the flip part of the classroom in a way that's really effective. And I've, I've really thought about, I've really, one of the things that I think I've done more efficiently than the first iteration is I've thought almost about the levels of learning and understanding that I want the students to have. So in a sense, what I've tried do in the in the um, in the videos I don't think I always accomplish this but generally speaking I try not to go into for example extreme levels of detail I try not to go off on anecdotes about particular things because I don't think those are useful I think what I'm trying to do is give the students the base so that they can explore those iterations and explore those complexities in the classroom with me so we can really see what advice do you have for instructors who are thinking of flipping their course and that's probably my last piece of advice to everybody. It's just like, if you're looking for perfection, just don't even bother. Like, unless you are, you have a lot more energy and ability than I do, like perfect videos and perfect classrooms and perfect, it, it just doesn't exist. You, you've got to just go and jump into it. And then you'll eventually start to transform it over time as for what you want. So I, yeah, that would be my last piece of advice on perfection. 
very hard to get. For more information about flipping your classroom, visit ctl.ualberta.ca.